Hello, anyone and everyone that's out there, as uh, we come back to this interesting little place. Uh, not out in the west no more, but over to the east, over to a little place uh, run by a big city called High Hall, home of one Silverback, our resident rogue as after coming across the pond in order to find out what happened to his family as well as his sweetheart Silverback found out some information about said family about what happened after he left he has not found the woman he's been looking for however he has found his father he's learned the truth of some of what forced him to flee his home and he even freed his father from his imprisonment. Now, in what used to be his hometown, sisters of the crying child, magical nuns of some kind looking for the... looking to speak to those in charge of this town and do what most of the town's people can only assume are dangerous things. We start with our party leaving the uh, decrepit old thieves guild. One one very different from what uh, what it used to be. So Tyler, where is Silverback going when he leaves, after he leaves his father in this almost a bunker, really? Hmm. One, I will say, I am going to lock the door behind us to show that we weren't there. <laughs> because you can do that with Thieves' Tools. A thing that nobody knows about Thieves' Tools. You can't relock a door. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fancy things with them. Um... Well, since the rest of the party's not here, we're not going to the tavern then, because that's going to be a little hell pit probably to go into. My plans have been soiled due to lack of people. Because <laughs> I had a plan. It's gone now. I, I guess we would probably... I'd probably just try to find a place that we could hunker down and watch the town for a bit. Somewhere that we wouldn't be noticed, but, like, would be able to watch. Okay. While not the tallest building around, the tavern of which you were staying at is placed in a well, in a good place with good vantage points, as well as um, just where the rooms are situated. A place that you can easily um, uh, take cover in. In case of any situations. I guess we're going back to the tavern then. <laughs> yeah, we'll go back to the and tavern. Also the, oh, there's, you well, you got some choices. There's also the spire at the top of the um, blacksmith's guild. The problem with the spire is that if you're spotted, there's only one way in, there's only one way out, and there's not a lot of cover. But has a lot more visibility you'll be able to see a lot more in town. Do have a man that can teleport me, so that might be an option. What are the others? The others are almost the worst of both worlds, being as probably because of how they're set up. They have um, like bad sight lines, or maybe they don't have any cover whatsoever. This, these two, they have the choice between better cover or, or a better sight line while both being on the main street to give you the vantage point you're trying to find. Which one is closer to the town hall? The the spire at the blacksmith's guild. Ah, oh, now that, that's making it tricky because I was hoping the spire was farther away, but the spire is the better point. The spire is going to give you almost complete coverage of the town, give or take a few roads and alleyways that are obfusc obfuscated because of um, buildings. However, the tavern, because it's not as tall, 
you'll have less sight lines, but you will be able to disappear a lot faster. With the tavern, be a lot less. is it full, like, the main road mainly, and then can see most of the yeah, streets the around it? the tavern is on, is to the side of the main road. The front door of the tavern is on the main road. Like, from the tavern, could I see the town hall and the entrance of town? Um... It would be difficult to see all the way to there, but you can get a lot of the main main road, and you can um, you can get a little bit of the town hall and stuff like that. It's just not as um, it's not of good of a vantage point. Hmm. Looking through my inventory on potential routes that I can take with this. Uh... Okay. I'm going to turn to Lauren and ask, which, what do you think? You think we should stick around the tavern or try to get somewhere a little more, well, potentially dicier? I, you're the one that wants to look out for something. I understand that. I just want to see if you have an opinion on this. Because I'm having a bit Jared, of trouble to figure out which I should take. Jared, why don't you roll me a straight d20? Jared just gets shot. Out <laughs> now <of nowhere>. one. <laughs> oh, no! Okay. Yeah, that's uh, go about your your things. <laughs> hmm. Tyrone's still at the tavern, isn't he? Who? Tyrone? No, no. Tyrone's Tyrone's been with you guys. It's just he's been sticking with Aloran more because uh he can't he's not as uh stealthy as you are. Okay. I'll ask him then the question. <laughs> Which do you think, Tyrone? Well, I mean, you're pretty. You're, you, like you, like you getting some good sight lines with that pretty rifle of yours might, might be pretty good. But I mean, like, like if we're talking about that crazy spire up on the on that place, like I mean, from down here it looks like there's only space for like one person up there, you know. But like, if you want to see stuff, I mean, that's a good spot. And like, but the problem is, is like. Like the tavern looks like the only place that has any like good cover. So like if we if anybody like we'd be able to slip away if anybody spotted us and stuff. But like we can't spot anything as better as the spire, you know. It's just like I don't. I'm I'm not exactly the guy to talk about this stuff. I mean I I'm just the guy who like makes sure people don't die, you know. But like I mean that rifle of yours, it's it's pretty. It'd be pretty nice on that spire if you, that's what you're thinking. But like take a little while to get back down, you know. It's just how tall is the spire? The spire, um, from the, uh, top of the, uh, blacksmith's guild, it's about five stories. It's so about 60 feet-ish, probably. Yeah, yeah, around that. Uh, how much damage can I negate by jumping off of something? I need to check that. <laughs> I have, I have damage negation. Oh, it's only ten. It's only ten damage. That's not gonna help. <laughs> we'll stick with the tavern then, for the time being. I might decide to move at some point. All right, Jared. Um, give me flat charisma roll. Oh, good, <laughs> good. Eleven, Jared. Due to the nature of your pact, due to your patron, and where you get your magic, you get, um, it, it's a very unfamiliar thing for you, because you are warforged, you are a metal man. Feeling is not exactly something you usually get. But right now, almost as if a sixth sense, 
you almost feel the air turn sour at the idea of the tavern. Huh. I, uh, I don't think we should go to the tavern. Now you have an opinion? What changed? Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I feel something. I don't usually feel things. I would assume as much, based on our interactions so far. What? Oh, you probably can't describe the feeling, can you? It feels wrong. That's a good explanation. All right. Let's try to get to the spire then, as quietly as possible, and without drawing any attention to ourselves, hopefully. And I will lead them to try to get to the spire without uh, the best path possible, without really drawing attention. Okay. I am Let still me, described uh, as like a half ogre or whatever I was before. Okay. Give me an intelligence roll. Oh boy. Uh, oh, the twelve, gross. <laughs> I don't like shit. Right. It's not about being stealthy right now. It's the dead of night. I mean, it's pretty difficult to be found out anyway. It's just about not bringing attention to yourselves. I didn't and... realize it was night already. What happened? No, it was not last session, bud. I thought it was the... We had gone in... We had gone in the morning to get my dad. Hmm. All right. Maybe I, I, I thought it was like mid-afternoon, if anything, because we spent a few hours in the guild. Oh, all right. Only a few hours. That was up. Yeah, I'm just misremembering. So it, it would be, I'd say, late afternoon, because you guys took a little bit of time at the uh, guild. So, like, even then, mid-afternoon sun, it's not the brightest it can be. There's long shadows, which you can use to hide your to hide yourselves, so it's just about not bringing attention to yourselves. And with the routes you choose, the turns you take, you're able to do that. Oh thank god, with a 12 I was expecting this to be worse. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're behind the forge yeah. now? Yeah, you're behind the blacksmith's guild. Is there an access point from the back to the roof? There are back doors into the building. Um, there doesn't seem to be an external access to the roof. I have an idea then. I'm going to... How tall is the roof? The roof is about... Let's see here... Uh, the roof's around um, 60 feet vertical. Hmm. How many things of rope do I have? Let's see. I think I only have one thing of rope. Do you have any rope, Aloran? Yes. Then I have an idea. Can I have that rope real quick? Yes. All right, and take his rope, stick it to my pack. I'm going to jump 30 feet up and then climb the rest of the way to get to the top of this roof. Athletics check. 25. All right, okay. Now a constitution save. What? Uh, that is a 20, dirty. All right. You take 
three piercing damage as to climb up the side of this wall you have to dig your claws into wooden planks and splinters are a thing ouch okay well i get to the top so that's all that matters oh yeah you um, get to the roof i am going to take the rope he gave me take out the rope i have tie them together and then tie them to the uh immovable rod and lock it in place about a three feet above the roof and let the rope drop mm -hmm. i have made a rope to climb on <laughs> you have done that and when i do it i'm just gonna kind of make a whistle down and make a gesture to climb up And I do want to keep watch to make sure no one's going to notice this happening. Mm. Is Aloran going to climb this? I mean, didn't, didn't Tyrone say he thought it looked like there was only space for one person up there? I mean, get everyone on the Whoa, roof and out on the spire, the but the rooftop, the rooftop, there's space. It's the spire that uh, doesn't seem like it's that. Are you are you on the roof? Yeah, I got on yeah. the roof and uh -oh. dropped a ro the ropes down to you guys to let you guys climb up. I was I was paying attention. I'll climb up. <laughs> All right. Tyrone follows Aloran, and let's see here. Mm. Yep, that's about it. All right. I'm gonna recollect the rope, give mm -hmm. Aloran back his fifty feet put away mine, and then put the immovable rod away. Uh, and I want to get a better idea of the spire, now that we're up here. So the spire, it seems like a, it's a less of a guard tower and more of a pseudo-observation um, point and lightning rod. As you see, there's, um, like, copper, copper bars and wiring, like, wiring down around the outside of the spire, um, leading down into the, uh, through, like, a drilled through hole in the roof of the building, and leading up to the top of the spire, a long rod, uh, pointing towards the sky. It looks to be of the same copper-like material. Um, the spire itself has an enclosed staircase within the column which ra raises it into the air. It's a very small spiral staircase. Okay. Hmm. Probably, probably should keep those two together. I'll, I'll look to them and just say, I'm going to go up to the top. If you notice anything, or I do, I guess just let each other know. And if we need to bail, you two should probably go together and I'll try to escape on my own. Sound like a plan? I give a thumbs up. <laughs> gonna nod and then I'm going to make my way up that staircase to try to get to the top all right it's it's a pretty tight staircase however it's still a set of stairs there's nothing difficult about stairs um getting close to the top you find that instead of the stairs going all the way to the top there's like almost like just a few rungs of a ladder to get up there probably just to give as much standing room at the top of this spire as possible going up that ladder there's it's nothing but a um featureless kind of observation area it's uh covered because the lightning rod at the top is sitting outside upon what is uh currently over your head and you can see so much of this town this building wasn't here last time you were here when you grew up here and you have never 
seen this place just in such a way. I mean, it's not the biggest town in the world. It's not the biggest city in the world, but it's... From up here, it just looks so alien, so different. So different from someone standing in the gutters and the mud of the street below. I guess I'll take it in for a moment, and then I want to... Once I've gotten over myself, which would probably be after like a minute or so, be looking out for potential danger and the nuns in particular. Okay. Why don't you give me a perception check for this? Uh, 26. Roll the 13 and plus 13. And Jared, what's your passive perception? 13. He's okay. a fireball hitting the top of the town. <laughs> so... When Silverback is kind of looking around, is he fixating on one part or is he sweeping around? He it would be to... a lot of sweeping, kind of getting okay. a view of everything. The nuns are the main thing he's trying to lock onto. Okay. But... While he's looking for these, um, these nuns, while he's looking for these unknown women, um, Silverback, like, sees the tavern. And it's late afternoon sun's getting low i mean it's not dark out but it's it's getting there shadows are growing long you can even look down and see the shadow of the spires stretching out and almost touching the front door of the tavern even though it's so far away from where you are and you see something happening at those front doors the tavern has these large double doors and there's these small figures there. You see them wrapping something around the door handles. You see you see more of them running around the back to one of the few places where you have a blind spot just because of the buildings in the way. And with that perception check, you hear you you do hear the faint breaking of glass, the faint sound of people yelling. It doesn't carry across the day as well as you would hope. However, it's definitely more than you would expect from just a place beginning to have more business as the night begins. I want to pull out my rifle and I want to get a closer look at the door. Okay, all right. So, um, getting, like, training your scope on the door, you see two small green humanoid, well, less humanoid. Goblins. Not very humanoid figures. <laughs> yeah, like, these are the basic things every adventurer has to deal with one day or another. They're small green goblins with nice pointy ears and stubby legs and arms. But um and you see two of the two of them at the front door wrapping and locking a chain around the doorknobs of these double doors, locking the front door of this place. And one of them, as you watch as one of them turns just enough for you to clock their face, and you see its eyes have been gouged out. I don't like this. I do not like this. I have a feeling it's something to do with the nuns. <laughs> are they just locking the building, or...? The ones that you're able to see are locking the building. At the front door, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. I want to see if the nuns are approaching the building from anywhere, because that's now feeling like they are lo those goblins are there to lock people in place so that the goblins can or so they can the nuns can get a hold of them give me another uh, perception check 21 this time I rolled less okay okay you're not 
like and and you're you're checking you're not checking any more of the tavern you're checking the other areas trying to find this right yeah the streets the alleyway i would look around the tavern, like back at the tavern from time to time but it would be mainly like looking for yep. where i'd last seen the nuns versus the tavern when trying to find like an area when trying to find where um they are you keep having to sweep past the uh past the tavern and on one of your passes you see as the, the shadows begin to finally reach far enough to the tavern that um the windows are lit not from the outside but the minuscule amount of lantern and candlelight on the inside you see shadows of people struggling within this tavern you see the faint shadow of maybe two or three mm, average sized men trying to hold back this giant uh, person shaped thing holding some kind of uh, the outline seems to be maybe a dagger a knife of some kind before your eye passes back over and even when you return back, instead of seeing this s silhouette of a struggle anymore, there's still movement of shadows, but it's not, it's not as clear as that first second that you saw. I do not like this, but I also don't want to give away what we're doing. How far is the tavern from us? Um, the tavern is about 250 feet down the road. I am going to peek out of the tower, do a whistle to get Tyrone and Lauren's attention, and then point towards the tavern, and kind of make a hand gesture to kind of look out, like, look over there kind of try to draw their attention to it and then I want to turn back and watch again because there's definitely a sinking feeling within Silverback's chest of what he feels is happening but at the same time he's not sure what else to do at the moment okay okay He's also so concerned that possibly Valorous and Rathen are in there, but at the same time, he's also feeling they're not due to the lack of gunshots. Okay, so with this, um, like, being brought to Aloran's attention, what Aloran can see from looking at the tavern um, without any roll is just the two small um, human-shaped creatures, like, uh, securing this front door how far away are they um like about uh 250 feet how uh how long is this roof this roof is about 30 feet. Please is don't there speak. enough space? Is there enough space for me to get 240 feet away from them? S enough space to get how many feet away from who? The uh, the goblins. No, the goblins are at the tavern's front door. So they are 250 feet away from you already. He's asking if he can move yeah. far enough forward there... on the roof so they would be yeah. within 240. Hmm, okay. Um be within two forty? Yeah, yeah, that's only that's only ten feet of movement. Yeah. You can do that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna I'm gonna cast chill touch on one of the goblins. Oh. <laughs> Wait, that has All a right. that has range? Yeah. I didn't know that. Create a ghostly skeletal hand in space of the creature. 
Then they won't. They won't be... know it comes from me. Uh, Ingenious. Yeah, go ahead and make that ranged attack. Twenty-four. <laughs> Twenty-four. Okay, that hits. Give me the damage. Fourteen necrotic. You watch as this creature like spasms before dropping to the ground and its body begins to dissolve into ash. Why am I am I... also gonna drop to the to the ground. Just in case. Why do I picture Lauren not only just summoning this hand, but it like appears behind him, taps his shoulder, the goblin turns around and then just grabs his face. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm picturing right now, and I totally could see a Lauren doing this. All right. So, um, after that, what's the um? You're you're dropping prone while on this roof, right? Yeah. Okay. So you won't be able to see what's happening. Um, Tyler Silverback, when he sees this little goblin like spasm and drop, the other one like reacts before like like it, it reacts by going over padding through the ash pulling out some like you're looking through your scope so you're able to see pulling out a padlock and going over back to the chains and like padlocking them before he does that i'm double checking something real quick you know what you know what? I'm pulling the trigger. I'm I'm pull I'm I'm pulling the trigger. <laughs> okay, what's your what's the range on the weapon you're going to be using? I would be using the traveler's rifle, even though I'm not attuned to it because I can still shoot it. It's 200 feet, but it goes okay, to so a you're... max range of 800. So it is. I'm going to do steady aim to keep myself from having disadvantage. Okay. All right. So I roll. That is a 25. Oh, yeah, that hits. Go ahead, roll damage. Okay, or my d12s. That does... I, I annihilated it based on the health, but 21 points of damage plus sneak attack, which oh, yeah. I won't even add that. You fire, and this creature just gets pulverized. A hole in its chest is blasted out, and before it even has time to fall onto the ground, its body begins to fall into the same black ash. That's not quite right. I'm going to quickly duck down a little bit, like try to hide myself a little bit more in this tower. And I want to keep watching, though, at the, the same time. All right. I'm making sure another one doesn't try to go and lock that door. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Because what I can tell now is if I stopped him from locking the padlock, that means people can still escape. Okay. Um, I'm going to need one of you to roll a charisma check, but I'm going to let one of you choose which it's going to be. What's your charisma? I have plus three. You should do it. <laughs> Nine. Maybe you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Nine. Fuck. Nine. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see here. You know what, Jared? Because of the nature of this, you get one more chance. Bud. He's giving you advantage. <laughs> this, well, it's more like to determine how fucked you are. A 12. Wow. Okay, okay. Not as okay. fucked, but we're still fucked. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Let's see here. We no longer have a semi-truck bursting through a window. It's now just like a small sedan. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. You see, as you watch this front door to see if anything's happening outside or inside, you see a small white 
Goose, begin walking up to the door. Oh, fuck. It's a, Oh, no. You don't know where it came from. You didn't see it up or down the road. It just comes out of the blind spot from one of the corners of the buildings. It starts walking up to the door. And the door bursts open with some magical energy. It's a fucking magic goose. This is bullshit. <laughs> oh, God. When the door opens, you're able to see in just slightly. You see this giant hulk of a man with their eyes missing. Just empty, bloodied gouges where his eyes should be. Holding not a dagger, not a, not a sword, not a knife, but what can only be s described as a machete. Standing there, and in the other hand, the decapitated body of one of the bargoers. Around his feet, many dead bodies already. And as these, and after these doors are burst open, you watch as some people, men and women alike, start running out the doors. I don't like what this goose is about to do. But I'm gonna watch. <laughs> So, let's see here. Ah. Make a, um, make a wisdom save. Both of you. Fuck. Oh, give me a good roll. Ugh, that's, ugh, that's a 12. 30, 20. Okay. I'm rolling like shit tonight, boys. Tyler, as Silverback watches as this small goose stares at this monstrous creature of a man, it lets out a very simple honk. And even though you're so far away, you can still hear it. I'm frightened. It hurts. Oh, it hurts. It oh, hurts God. so bad. And after 10 seconds and the pain begins to subside you see that it's begun raining outside just just a just a light i'm not in a good spot <laughs> a light ripple right now oh no but you can only see it because it, like and then after a few more seconds you notice you can't hear the rain falling and as you touch move your hands up to your ears you feel the drops of blood that come from your bleeding eardrums great uh, you're deafened for about a minute no <laughs> one of my best senses gone <laughs> I'm just gonna shake it off as best I can and keep watching. You see the goose is almost pecking at this larger creature and every time it makes contact, it's not simply just a peck, it's not a bite, it's a this creature is thrown across the room. It's a full-on blood... It's like fucking One Punch Man, but a goose. Like, <laughs> it's... You can, before this brawl, even, um, travels deeper into the building, you watch as this... Just goose. A goose, of all things. With the simple peck of its beak snap this creature's shin before sending it deeper into the room. Definitely gonna shudder at the sight of someone's leg breaking because bones breaking is the worst thing ever to witness. Um, but just gonna I, I can't do anything but watch. I'm not gonna shoot the goose because I'm afraid of the goose now. <laughs> Now would have been the perfect time to say zero. 
Uh oh. So you're just waiting. Is that it? Well, actually, if it's raining, scratch that, because I did just think about this. If it's raining, I actually, I would have the, do I smell that, what's the smell that you get from when lightning is coming? There is a smell that comes with it, because I've, I've smelled it before. It's like plasma. It smell after it shocks, but it's not after before. the shock. Hmm. I'm in a metal tower. I'm afraid of being struck by lightning. <sighs> Do I have anything to help prevent being struck by lightning? Probably not. Hmm. I'm going to try to get down the tower. Because one, my ears are bleeding. And two, I think with the sight of rain, it's probably time to get down. <laughs> No right, no right. Jared. Jared. What? Bud. Go ahead and give me that roll, Charisma. I'm gonna get struck by wow. Oh no. Here. I didn't like the ominous dong of your your dice that you just rolled the echo from it. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. So that's what's happening here. Okay. As does a Lauren start looking down at street level, or is he still hitting the deck? Yeah, I, I guess I would have gotten up. He probably would have heard the gunshot and got up, because you would have realized I shot the other one. I probably would have gotten up when it started raining. That's okay. another, yeah. After hearing a honk. <laughs> honk? What the fuck was that? <laughs> so, um, as, as Aloran gets up, Aloran, you see, first the shape of a man being thrown out uh, the third story window of the tavern. Second, a procession of nuns coming down the street from the town hall. And third, a very small group of those goblin creatures, about 12 strong, all missing their eyes, coming from out behind the tavern. I'm gonna lay down again. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Tyler, once Silverback gets down to the bottom of the spire, he is also able to see this activity. Can I hear again? <laughs> Um, Is my yeah. hearing coming back? Okay. It doesn't take it doesn't take an entire minute to get down to the spire, but you would have had time to to get it back. I would see him crouching. I would see the nuns in the street are prone, and I would probably crouch and kind of scurry over to him and just be like, "When did they get out here?" I'm trying to be as quiet as possible, even though my ears are ringing. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just stood up, saw them, and laid back down. That's probably a good call. Though, they may already know you're up here. We might want oh, well. we might want to move soon, or at least have a plan to move. I'll keep watch. And I want to kind of get to a spot where I can stay low and watch without being like directly in someone's line of sight I guess there's not really anyone to really see me at the moment other than the nuns like true sight they have through their hands but I, you you understand what I'm trying to get at mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do I need to roll so you're trying to, you're trying to get a you're trying to get a vantage, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty easy to get a vantage, even from this rooftop. I mean, it's not as good as when you were in the spire. However, like, the only you wouldn't really need to make a roll just to poke your head over the edge to see what's happening. Yeah. I... So, as, you, as you're looking over, you see a small, not-so-white goose, as it seems to be splattered in blood and other viscera, um, pecking as, as a good the, goose should be <laughs> pecking at the um still body of this um man with the machete damn that goose is scary and you see as all of these uh all of these goblins begin running at the goose and it just turns to look at them and uh let's see here i swear to god if they just turn to ash or stone or something i'm gonna lose my shit <laughs> you see the you see it's it's very difficult to tell you're you're not used to seeing spell casters with no hands or other features casting something so instead of seeing the movement of the body you literally see as strands of the air itself condense into a deep purple signifying the magic around this creature before all of these little goblin creatures slow from their full run slow from their walk slow from their very slow shuffle to a complete stop before beginning their movement again as they begin speeding up in the other direction shuffling in the other direction walking in the other direction running in the other direction does it turn around or are they yes okay turning around and running I was making sure it was they were turning around and running and not just like they came to a stop and then they just rewinded. <laughs> I had I had to make sure. All right. And that goose turns and looks at these nuns. And you see as four of these uh <clears throat> Sorry, as nine of these nuns, you watch, and even Aloran can hear this, as a visceral sound of flesh ripping, as you watch as four of these nine nuns wrench their hands from their face, revealing the eyes sunken, discolored, some pure white. Um, and they simply look at this goose. And let's see here. You see as this goose is slowly risen into the air by some magic. You watch as these four nuns begin wailing and crying and screaming and even dropping to the ground in anguish and pain. While this goose is sprung into the air, its feet dangling to the, towards the ground, its head outstretched to the sky, its wings pulled out to either of its sides, and it seems stuck in the air before a cage of pure black magic is built around this small creature, dropping it into the dirt. Like, through the ground? 
No, not through the ground. Oh, just on onto the, the ground. Okay. Yes. What the fuck? What happened to this town while I was gone? I I have no words. I I don't know what to do. This is so far from anything that I am equipped for. Especially without my man that just shoots guns fast. I guess I'm just gonna watch. <laughs> I don't know. There's not really much so, else I can do. <laughs> while the silence of this situation begins washing over everyone, Tyrone very quickly shuffles, almost scuttles towards you. As he's already small, so he takes so much energy for him to kind of cross this roof to get to you. It's just like, hey, so boss, um, why are we even still in town while this is happening? I mean, I am still trying to get to somebody. Okay, well, if they're not here, I think maybe we should just go ahead and do that, because that... I don't I don't want to I don't want to deal with those nun ladies. I'm going to turn to Alora and just say maybe behind the town hall. We'll try to break in. I need to find her. And I'm going to run uh what I want to try to do is if you will let me do this, I want to run off the side of the roof drop a few feet and I want to use the uh, essentially use the um, immovable rod to try to slow my fall repeatedly as I go down I'm gonna say okay so it's a 60 foot drop you want to drop how many feet before you begin doing that I would probably say do it like every 20 feet and then, like, the last, the last 20, Every I would 20. just let myself fall. Because I can land okay. on 20 feet and not be hurt. Okay. So that's going to be... It's going to be two checks. So... That's going to be two instances. And it's going to be, like, two checks each, actually. Because first, you're going to need a raw dexterity check um, to do it fast enough. Then, you're going to need a strength save to either not fall or pop your arm out of your socket. So the first roll is a 22 and a 16. Okay, all right. And then I want to drop another 20. That one is a 17 and a 15. Okay. So... What is Silverback more used to doing when he would feel his arm being wrenched in a direction it's not supposed to be wrenched would he keep a hold to not fall would he prioritize that he would or he would probably he, let go would, and then try to redirect himself to catch himself on the fall okay because and i will tell you this letting go does mean losing the immovable rod oh i can jump up to it it's 20 feet um with this second jump it would be 40 feet Shit. It would be 40 feet off the ground. I probably would still let go of it, and I would probably okay. attempt to retrieve it after the fact. <laughs> okay. So letting go, um, other than a minor tweaking of your shoulder because of the drop, nothing problematic except for the fall itself. How many feet of falling damage do you negate? Uh, 10. Okay. Let's see here. That used to be a lot. It's not a lot anymore. <laughs> so, let's see here. Uh, in total, you're going to take nine bludgeoning damage from your fall. All right. Probably swear a little bit once I hit the ground, get back up. I want to... <laughs> now that I realize I've just left the rod floating in the air, I want to climb up the building and try to get it back. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, give me a. This plan's not going as planned. Check. Uh, that would be a uh, nineteen. Okay, you're to the height of the movable rod. However, um, it's not exactly within arm's reach. I'm gonna jump. <laughs> I'm gonna jump. I'm risking it. I'm gonna jump for it. <laughs> Give me an athletics check to catch yourself. Ah, 16. Gross. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna okay. fall again. It's a difficult catch. If I can't, like, catch it and keep holding on, I want it. to at least push the button to drop it. <laughs> you barely make it now holding 40 feet in the air from this immovable rod okay i'm push the button and i'm going to attempt to the if you will let me really like maybe a deck save or something to try to catch myself to negate some of this damage same dex check strength save okay dex is 17 the strength save, that's caught. Ugh. Ah, that's a 14. Gross, I'm rolling shit. It's, you're really not doing any favors for your arms, but you don't have to let go this time. Oh, no, 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 I wasn't trying to, like, push the button and then try to catch myself again. I mean, I was dropping the full 40 feet and then trying to just roll into oh. it and try to lower the damage from the fall, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. So you want to drop the full 40 feet? I have jumped from 40 feet before and tucked and rolled at the bottom. It's possible. It hurts a little bit, but it, I've done it. I was much more nimble and didn't have a broken knee at the time, but... Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Because I know I'm going to take damage regardless is, like, pretty much what I'm getting in my head right now. Yeah. So for the full 40 feet, let's see here, that's going to be 10 bludgeoning damage. Can I roll anything to try to lower it, or is that... That was the lower version. That was the lower version. <laughs> okay. Fuck. All right. I'm just going to swear a little more, tuck the, uh, the, rod, the movable rod in my bag, and uh, I'm going to book it to the, uh, the back of the... Town Hall. Okay. I told Lauren to meet me. With Tyrone. Because I know he can only teleport one person with Dimension Door. Jared? I'm gonna need... Another Charisma roll. Wait real quick, I'll be right back. Seven. Okay. So, Jared, how are you getting to the uh, town hall to meet Silverback? Because it's about 250. The front gates is 250 feet away. Then it's an extra 50 feet to the front door of the building. So front door of the town hall is 300 feet away. And then it would be another um, 80, 90 feet to get to the back of the building, so around 300, more like 400 feet, more like 400 feet. 400 feet to get to the back of the town hall. Uh, yeah, that's that's in range. I can. Okay, you're able to do that. Yeah, that's 500 foot range. I can, I can get there. All right. Dimension Door is a wonderful spell. <laughs> so with Dimension Door, you are able to get yourself and your party's healer to the back of the town hall. And after, like, two, three minutes... 
Silverback is able to meet you there. A slightly more bruised up Silverback. <laughs> that. All right. I'm going to come up and just say, Tyrone, hey, I'm not normally the one to ask this, but could I, could you heal me a little bit? Yeah, bud. I mean, like, yeah, I got your butt. I mean, like, you don't have to be embarrassed about it. It's my job, dude. Like, don't worry about it, dude. Uh, yeah, like, uh, you need some big or just a little bit of some small, you know? Uh, moderate, probably. All right, all right, okay, yeah. No, I, I get it. I get it. I mean, like, I can, let me just, uh, let me just get some, uh, just just give me a sec. And it's like, you just watch as Tyrone goes over to one of the immaculate gardens out back here with all the nice tulips and roses. And he just stomps through one of these gardens and gets to the back of one of these flower beds and starts pulling out some roots in the ground. It's just like... And he begins, like, crushing it up in his... uh. He begins chewing on the end of some of these roots and then spits it out into one of his hands. It's just like, okay, bud. And he just comes over and he just slaps this chewed up gunk onto the top of your head. And you are healed for 13 HP. Yeah, it's pretty close. <laughs> just kind of trying not to show any disgust from being spit on practically just be like thanks <laughs> now and i want to uh did my dad tell me what side of the building he saw sylvia on if he saw her no he did say that he saw her once um being moved somewhere uh, near the dining room. I would know that. I, I feel like I would know the layout of the building. What's. Where's the dining room? Is it that main room? Yeah, the dining room's. It's not the main room. It's the. um. It's it's out to the. Uh, to the left of that main meeting hall. Um, however, other than the sighting of her in that general area, you don't have a. Um, any real fix on where she was being taken. Hmm. I'm gonna turn to the two of them and be like, do either of you have some way of, I don't know, probing a building or doing some possible reconnaissance or asking a being of some sort information about a place? I would take your silence as a no. Yeah, but I am... Um, I spit roots on people's foreheads. I'm not exactly a communicative kind of person, you know? Yeah. All right. Um, this is going to be a bit tricky. I want to go over to the side where I know the dining hall is, and I want to look through one of the windows if I can. Okay, you're looking in... Um, you're trying to. F you're able to see this this dining. It's it's big. It's a rich person's dining room. It's fucking a long, large table. It's not set. However, um, it seems to have been. It seems to be cleaned. Um. Almost not a completely empty room, other than this table. Just not very well. What's the word I'm looking for? Accessorized, garnished, um, decorated. It's very plain, is what you're saying. It's very plain. It's very, it's very devoid of anything that gives this room any life. Is there it's a smaller mostly... room that I can look through the window of that's connecting to this dining room? Give me a an investigation roll. I'm not great at this, but I I have some skills in this. Fuck me, that's an eleven. <laughs> 
Looking around, the only window that would give you what you're looking for would be a small hallway window off to the side. However, that, the trapes are closed. Shit. And I know these windows are booby-trapped because my father told me. Um, hmm. Mm. I'll go back to it, Lauren. Just be like, do you by chance have any way of, I don't know, disarming magical traps, either of you? I feel like that could possibly be more one of your alleys. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, like, yeah, no, sorry, but, bud, um. All right. This plan is getting a little bit trickier every moment that I find out we're missing something. Is there a back door? Yes. Can I check it for traps? <laughs> I've never gotten asked this question as a rogue. Can I look for traps? Oh, that's better. That's better. 17. Okay, okay. Finally rolled something higher than a 15 for something I'm not good at. The only thing you see is a very obvious string set up to a, a large, almost dinner bell-looking thing up in the corner of this uh, door of this uh, doorway. Can I disarm it without making the bell ring? Um, sleight of hand with disadvantage. All right, I'm I'm okay with that. That's. So the first was an 18. The second, and uh, the second doesn't matter because it was a natural swing. So sad. Okay. Right. So disarming it without it making noise is completely possible. And after getting it down, um, putting it on the ground, it, it only makes the slightest of dull dings. Nothing even louder than anything but the three of you would be able to hear. I still would pause for about 10 seconds to see if anything happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Knowing they're magic practitioners, I would be very scared. <laughs> mm -hmm. I assume nothing? No. I want to pick the lock. Okay. Actually, no I want to check if the door is locked first. <laughs> Let me check if the door is locked before I waste my time. The door when you go to touch the handle you feel the door push in and once it pushes in just slightly far enough you see that on the inside of the frame the area that would hold the latch has been busted out towards the uh, inside of this room someone's kicked in the door I'm going to slowly push it open enough to get a view into the room. Okay. Okay. I'm very Let's afraid see. doing this, but I will do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me see something real quick. It's your go mother. Ahead <laughs> and go ahead and roll me a perception check. Ah! I got attacked by my dice, I apologize. Ow. Uh, perception. Uh, that is a... 17. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gross. So as you look into this room, you see uh, less of a room, more of a hallway. You see um, through some open doorways. Through one of them, the dining room. Through another, the kitchen. Um... And then the rest you can't really see from your perspective, really. I'm going to turn to them and say, if I'm not back in an hour, I don't know, Fig figure something out, I'm probably in trouble. <laughs> and I'm going to turn invisible for my final time that I can with this ring. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, into the, okay. I'm going into the building. All right. So going into this hallway, 
first room you pass is that dining room. The next room you see directly out to the uh, other side of you is the kitchen. Um, you see the kitchen is... um. You know that the kitchen is connected to a lot of places that's not easily accessible from these main hallways because that's usually where what the family would have considered the help to have stayed. So there's, it's almost its own ecosystem compared to the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. Well, I know she's not, she, wait, she shouldn't be there. I'm going to keep moving and I want to keep looking around until I want to be as quiet as possible, but I want to be quick. Okay. Where are you looking? Like, deeper into the house, towards the meeting rooms and, like, you know, actual bedrooms? I'm going or... towards the bedrooms to start. Okay. All right. Go ahead and give me a uh, investigation check. So much investigation. Twelve. Uh, All right. I can't roll an investigation check for shit right now. When checking the areas, when checking the rooms, um, you see some of these doors are closed, some of them are locked. And one of them has light coming from the bottom of the, the bottom of the door. Can I look through the keyhole? Okay. Give me a uh, perception. 21. Still rolling like shit. Oh. I need to put this dice in jail. Looking through the keyhole, the first thing you see is... is the back of a drow woman. You see the uh, ears. You see a elven cloak around their shoulders. Um, they seem to be writing something on uh, at this desk that's across the room. Do they seem familiar to me, by any way? <sighs> mm. No, no. There's no real reason or way that they would right moving on <laughs> uh, I guess I would just keep looking until I can like if she, she's not going to be on the higher levels because they he said she, they did move her down to the lower levels alright cool. so I want to keep looking around the lower probably the the first two floors I want to go through as fast as possible. I'm trying to fight the clock here and not waste my hour. Okay, so... Um... How long will you take to check these lower levels? I want to do it in... If it's possible, 30 minutes. Because I don't, I don't need a lot of time to look through rooms. Okay. I'm, I'm looking for Sylvia, and that's it. Okay. After your 30 minutes, after finding these empty rooms, you see most of these rooms are, look as though they're ransacked. Well, not ransacked, but somebody cleared out. Mm -hmm. Somebody cleared out. And you finally find yourself back in this meeting room, passing that room where you saw the light, where you saw the lantern light. Now the door swinging open, the room empty, the light's gone. And in this meeting room on the large table, you see a letter. A letter in an envelope stamped with a wax seal. Which, what is the wax seal? It's the seal of your thieves guild. I don't like that it is just left there. You look up and see that even the front doors have been left hanging open. They've slowly begun to close once again as night 
slowly begins to creep. I'm going to pick up that town. letter really quickly and quickly open it. Opening it, you see that it begins. Dear Elsif, you're not the man that I ever would have believed I would have married. And I cannot say that I was happy. However, even though your son did not come into this world the way you would have wanted him to, the work that I did to do so, the work that I did simply to even seem as though I was like you, will forever make me proud. Do not believe that I hate who we've brung into this world. I simply hate what they could have been stuck in. What they have found themselves stuck in. What they have found themselves endangering. I was not... I was never in your life to ruin it. I was never in your life to ruin someone else's. I was only there so that I may have a better one. I am not even like you, Elsif. Nothing is like you except the child which I was able to bring into this world from what you gave me. And while I may never feel a sense of motherly love for such a person, I feel such pride that I could do something that should have been impossible, like bringing new life into this world with nothing but the corpse of a jackal corpse of a coyote and you and while I cannot act like a mother especially not now I still wish the best for you and for Kai get out of this place never come back I won't signed Sil <sighs> I'm going to fold the letter, drop it into my bag of holding, and I'm going to continue my search. <laughs> this is a question that will be answered later. <laughs> I want to go check the kitchen, because I have a feeling she might have put Sylvia as the help. Mm-hmm. Okay. Going back out, going towards the kitchen. Um going to go through it, try to find those um, less traveled areas of the house or are you going to check the kitchen itself? First I want to check the kitchen. If there's okay. signs that people have been, are still here I will check further. Give me a perception check. I'm good at that. Fuck! 19. <laughs> Not rolling good. I have a high perception but I'm still rolling like shit. Looking across this kitchen, I mean, it's not as extravagant as one of the more publicly allowed areas of the house. However, it is well stocked. Food left on dead stoves, knives still sitting in uh, chopping blocks, others on um, cutting boards, produce and meats and fruit strewn across the strewn across different tables, all in various stages of being prepared. The kitchen is quiet, but you can see how busy it was before, before whatever happened here, before things got, became so dire within the town. And just such a short amount of time, these, this convent, of these nuns did something to cause at the least some kind of evacuation. But I know if they have a basement. With a place like this, 
while you may have never been there. There's always a chance. I've robbed plenty of places. There's got to be a basement. I'm finding the basement. Right. By this point, I am probably dashing around, though. I'm going as quickly as possible while still invisible. Mm -hmm. All right. So, looking around, um, you finally find it. You find a doorway with a stairwell through the threshold. The stairwell stretches down to dark, dungeon-like walls before turning and the darkness from this, from down there, so is so suffocating that even standing at the top of these stairs, it's almost as if that dark, inky blackness was trying to fight the light and reach its way to the top of the stairs to meet you. I'm gonna push in. All right. As you venture down the stairs, gets darker and darker and while you can still see even with such phenomenal phenomenal <laughs> sight it begins getting more and more suffocating until finally you find yourself at the bottom of the stairs looking through this area and you're met with a single door out in front of you at the end of a almost empty basement with a light coming from the bottom of the door. I want to look through the keyhole. You see the foot of a bed. You see bits and pieces of larger mechanical devices surrounding this bed. Is the door locked? No. I want to slowly open it and get a better look. Okay. Opening the door, you see the sight of this bed. These, um, pieces of equipment surrounding it, medical equipment of some kind, and a short black tabaxi woman lying on this bed. She's hooked up to these devices. You see that her she, what she's hooked up to this bits of rubber tubing. These This tubing um still, even now, siphoning her blood. You see her chest slowly rise up and down. She doesn't seem to uh, open her eyes, whether through just being tired or maybe she doesn't have the strength, but you know it's her. It is her, it is Sylvia, she is here, and in some semblance she is alive. Is it draining her blood, or is it like a transfusion? You see that at the end of this tubing, there was an area for something, something that was collecting, but it's gone now. It's just an empty tube dripping more and just dripping not a lot but just the I consistent want, I want to short remove these wires are these tubes okay doing so is same as taking out an IV pulling out a needle and I want to stop any bleeding that I can like wrap it as one All right. go ahead just make a quick medicine check then uh, 12 I'm not good at it but it's <laughs> Okay. Like tearing up old cloths and like has haphazardly wrapping them. Okay. She's she's breathing. She's you see that she's trying to say something, but even when you get close to try to listen, it's it doesn't it's nonsense, it doesn't make sense. It's uh it's words with no real uh 
meaning behind them, nothing creating sentences. And does, she, does she look injured at all? She looks out of it. Out of it. She doesn't look like she has any strength. She doesn't even seem to have the strength to lift her head from her pillow. I'm going to drop my invisibility because it's probably near the end of the time anyways. And as I'm kind of looking her over, I'm going to very gently bring her onto my shoulders and try to carry her out of this place. Okay. As you pick her up, you walk through the room, you walk through this empty basement, up the stairs and through the suffocating darkness, through the winding hallways, past the servants' quarters, past all the little storage areas that the workers were forced to live next to and maybe even within within this place and finally you get back to the kitchen and you notice that on that little knife block one of those kitchen knives you could have sworn it was there before you could have sworn it was there it's gone now I'm pulling out the fig the golden figurine and summoning the lion. And I'm gonna have it stand by me. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna pause for a minute while I'm sitting there. Kinda just listening i want to listen to see if i can hear any breathing or th this is like solely me trying to identify either a smell or a yes like a sound of someone nearby all right go ahead and roll me a perception check then right natural 20 <laughs> i didn't need my advantage that i get with sound and smell natural 20 okay. which goes to a 33 okay You hear shallow, excited breaths. Not from around a doorway, not from around a corner, not from somewhere that you can't see, but instead you hear it where it can't have possibly been because you were just there because you would have seen it you would have walked past, you would have walked through it you hear that horrible shallow breathing right I'm behind you booking it as fast as i can and when i do that no i'm initiative fuck <laughs> uh 21 fuck me I know what I'm going to do, though. All right, well, Lauren, uh, Jared, why don't you go ahead and give me an initiative? 13. All right. Now, Tyler, I am going to let you know your speed because you are carrying another creature. Yes, it's half. Okay. I yep. Now you are at the top of initiative, so when I glance back, do I see who's behind me? You see a 7-foot tall man with their eyes missing in their skull, staring down at you with a kitchen knife in their hands. The shadows casting from the windows in the rest of the room make it so that the only feature of this person you see is the empty holes where their eyes should be, and the rest of them is simply a shape. I am going to pull out the marble of slipping and say the words slippity boppity boom and drop it behind me, disengage, and I'm going to run as far as I can, which is 20 feet, 
out the door, and then I'm going to action, action surge and run another 20 feet. While doing that, okay. I'm going to yell, Aloran, get in here now. <laughs> And you're running toward the back door. Again? I'm going back, door. back towards the back door. I'm trying to get to the back door. Okay. So with the complete, you said 20 feet? Yes. And then the okay. tiger <laughs> or the lion is going to follow me and hold its ground between me and this target. Okay. With the complete 20 feet, you are able to get halfway to that back door. Um, or oh, it's 40 feet in total because I action surge to get Yeah, with point. the complete 40 feet. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to be able to get to halfway to that back door. Um, Aloran, what are you doing? Um, so how, how long were, was I waiting outside? Probably 45 minutes. Ish. Pretty much, yeah. Damn. Um, and I guess, yeah, I'm going to run inside. All right. With your movement, you can get 10 feet away from Silverback as he's running towards you. Actually, well, with a dash action, you can get all the way to Silverback even past him, but... I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> yeah. You see me do I... <laughs> do I see why he's running? No. Okay, um... Well, I can tell he's running from something. Uh, I'm gonna cast Minor Illusion behind him. And just like, make it look like whatever's behind me is like, behind him instead. Like kind of moving the scenery forward. Okay, so trying to make like a forced perspective of just an empty hallway? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. That's a great idea. Good job, Jared. And then um, there we go. Sixty feet. Okay. So we're back. As you look at Aloran after he even casts this, you kind of, even though you can't really see how it's working, you kind of tell it's like he's probably trying to cover you guys. He's probably trying to make it look as though you're not there, or something like that. The man. He's too big to even be considered the man. The shape which follow, which was behind you, Tyler, behind Silverback. You watch as it comes in through the door Aloran just walked through. Oh, this is bullshit. And it walks up behind Aloran. Let's see here. Now, I'm going to need the two of you to make wisdom saves. Great. Let's go on. 16. 18. Okay. Uh, you both pass. Thank uh, God. Go ahead and roll for the lion, Tyler. Oh, yeah, the lion has to roll. Uh, let me find out what his wisdom is. Okay. Uh. Uh, he, he rolled a 15. He's not doing too hot either, but he's doing better. Your lion is frightened of this creature. Yeah, I figured as such. Uh, let's see here. So, you see as just this large man, like, hefts this kitchen knife. And, um, like, begins slashing at Aloran. Metal on metal violence. Let's see here. That's going to be a hit. Aloran, you're going to take 10 slashing damage. Uh, your movement speed is going to be reduced by 5. And then... Let's see here... Well, I'm going to reaction, Gift of the Gem Dragon. Uh, it's going to need to make a strength save. 
Okay. I didn't know you had that. <laughs> yes, I... What's the save DC? 16. 16. I used okay. it in the, um... Uh, the fight with those gnolls. It passes. Okay, so it takes... Four... Four... Yeah, yeah four force four damage. damage. So, after this, it then attempts to grab a Lauren. Let's see here. Um, go ahead and make a acrobatics or athletics roll, Jared. 16. Uh, so, Rack, you watch as this shape of a man grabs Aloran by the back of the neck and just brings him off his feet. You're going to take an extra 12 bludgeoning damage as his grip is simply that powerful. Holy shit. Okay. That's two silverback. Okay. How close am I to the back entrance? 40 feet away. Those 40 feet through Aloran and this creature. Yeah. If I run past it, it gets attack of opportunity. There's a chance it'll grab me. Don't want that. Not attuned to the gun yet, which I need to be. Fuck. Um... I'm going to run past it and use disengage as bonus action. And okay. use my action to go 40 feet in total to this back door. And I want to get to the back door and I'm going to shout back to a Lauren teleport yourself out here. And that's my turn, because that's all I can do. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm still holding an unconscious Sylvia on my shoulders. <laughs> okay. Fighting is not much of an option right now. <laughs> Tyrone sees a Lauren get grabbed like this. He's just like... Oh shit, oh fuck, um, uh, 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 and he casts Firebolt, attacking this creature in the back, hits, uh, and does, let's see, well, ain't that nice. Okay, that's you, Aloran. You're still grappled, but you can, um, like, you, you can go ahead and make, you can attempt to escape with your action. Well, I don't really need to attempt. I'm gonna uh, cast Far Step. Far Step, okay. And, yeah, teleport outside. Next to Silverback. Alright. And that's a bonus action. I can I can still see the man. Um you guys are standing outside just like outside the door, like not out to the side. If I can get to the side, I'll hide myself around the corner. <laughs> I I would teleport outside in front of the door where I can still see him. Okay. Then and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast mental prison on him. All right. He needs to do an int save. An in an intelligence. intelligence save. Okay. What's the condition that this is going to cause? Um. 
Uh, mental prison? Um... <laughs> mental prison? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, don't, uh, don't worry. I'm looking at it now. All right. So, um, fails the save. Okay, so... Um... You make the aim error. Oh, all right. I'm looking at the. I, I, okay, I, he he succeeds the save. Okay, so he just takes twenty eight psychic damage. Okay. All right. So you can still see him from out from through the doorway, correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, after attempting to cast this, uh, he turns around to look at you, Aloran, um, and goes up to Tyrone. And begins to attack good old Tyrone Biggums. Uh, let's see here. You watch as he, like, stabs Tyrone with this kitchen knife. Before, let's see here. Before he picks Tyrone up by his tiny little neck. Hmm. I don't like how this is turning out. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Uh, and then that's back to Silverback. I'm going to take... Sylvia, I'm going to take her to a place of cover, if there's one within 20 feet. Is there? You want... I'm sorry, what? I want to take Sylvia to a place of cover, somewhere I can put her down. Um... Yeah, you can you can get her to one of the lower, like, dividing walls within this backyard. It's not going to provide a lot, but it'll give something. Yeah, I'm going to put her there. And then I am going to take out the demon's roar, even though I told myself I would not do this. I am going to activate said demon's roar, and I'm going to take a shot. Does the thing technically have an ally within five feet of it? That because he's not incapacitated, does sneak attack still proc? No, Tyrone's incapacitated. He's incapacitated. This is bullshit. Not, because of the grapple, he would be considered incapacitated for this. Then I want to use steady aim to give myself advantage. Because I need advantage <laughs> for this shot. To do my sneak attack. Am I able to do said thing? Yeah, you're able to do that. Alright. Uh, that's a 28 to hit. That hits. Alright. The demons roar active. Ooh, baby. Ooh, that's 38 with the gun. Plus, I'm just going to roll this on D&D &D and Beyond because I don't feel like rolling 66. Uh, that is... So what was that? 30... What did I say? 36? What did I say? My dice moved. I think it was, I'll say 33. It's probably probably about that. 33 plus the 23, 56 points of damage. With 56 point. points of damage, okay. Yes. Which I will get 28 back, but then I'm going to lose. That's 14, 22. I lost all the health that I just regained. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. All right, that is to Tyrone. Yeah, 
Tyrone's still stuck. That's gonna be a Lauren. Situation kind of sucks because we're ranged characters. We're not supposed to get up close. <laughs> about to go sorry <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my packed power to create ammo for my gun mm-hmm Um, does, does it take like a bonus action or anything to load the bullets? Yeah, it's a bonus action. I'll load them, yeah. That's the end of my turn. Alright. Uh, then that's to this creature. Let's see here. Okay. You see, uh, he begins using this knife to stab into Tyrone. Um, that's a crit. We better not lose our healer when the rest of the party's not here. So that's gonna be... So you watch as this shape of a man, his, uh, the eyeless sockets of his skull still visible in the light, begin to raise this kitchen knife and stab into Tyrone's body as he holds him in the air. Oh my by god, this throat. is the fucking Myers Mori. <laughs> I'm so Let's see here. Uh, Jared, we're then... going against the Tombstone Myers. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Okay. He s continues to stab into Tyrone. Tyrone's not looking good, but he seems... But he's he's he sounds like he's still alive. He's just like, Jesus, fuck, ah, please! Ah, ah. They all sound alive before they die. <laughs> Especially against Myers. That's gonna be to Silverback. All right. I am steady aiming again, and I am going to uh, fire the demon's roar again. Uh, 28 again. That's going to hit. Okay. Ooh, 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 spicy rolls again. That's 17, 23, 30. Plus I am adding a superiority dice for marksman shot, which I believe is a d10. Yes, it is. Uh, so that's another 7, so 37, plus sneak attack. 37, 41, 60, 65 points of piercing damage. 65 damage? Yes. You shoot into this large man's chest, and he staggers back, his death grip still on Tyrone's neck and he slowly kind of takes a step towards a wall 
almost as if he's going to fall before pushing out his hand, holding Tyrone into the wall, pressing him against it. And while still leaning against it, pushing his arm into Tyrone's throat, he just slams the the blade of the knife into Tyrone, and you hear as wood splinters before slowly pushing itself away from the wall and looking at Tyrone, tilting his head to the side and falling backwards onto the ground. Silverback would probably shout no. Tyrone, you see, like, when this this shape, uh, when this just giant man falls, you see as Tyrone, his hands shoot up to this knife, and he just begins pulling himself up, just like, oh god, it hurts! Ah! <laughs> I'm going to sigh relief. I'm going to quickly go over and help him to the best of my ability. The knife has gone through his shoulder and into the wall, pinning him up there, but he is still very much alive. I'm going to grab him with one arm and then with the other grab the knife and just say, brace yourself, and I'm going to try to tear the knife out. (laughs) All right. Strength check. Oh! That's a 19. <laughs> I, my, my first high roll <laughs> that wasn't a net 20. Oh, 19. Okay. You're able to rip the knife out, and Tyrone slams into the ground. Just oh, I'm holding him up with one arm. I would have like tried to hoist him up. No, you needed both hands oh. to pull this out. Well, I'm going to throw the blade to the side, and then quickly check on him I feel like are you you're going to live right <laughs> yeah yeah it's just gonna hurt uh... is he he trying to heal himself or yeah he's he, he's right now he's just trying to get up I'm gonna help him to his feet. And just kind of stay by him for a moment while he's recoiling from what just happened. He just, he just kind of limps up. It's just like, <sighs> oh god, oh god, that, that was not good. <sighs> I would assume it wasn't. <sighs> That was worse than the 28 stab wounds last time. Right. He's so strong! He picked me up like a doll! He would have done the same to me. (laughs) Oh god. Like, where, where did he come from? I'm still trying to process that myself. Oh god. We need to leave this town. Okay. Alright. Let's go. Oh god. Are you gonna heal yourself or do you need something to help you a little bit? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'll be able to walk, but it's, it's still gonna hurt, man. Oh god. Okay. And you see just after a little bit of druidic magic, um, you see as he crushes some bark in one of his pockets and rubs it into the wounds, He's he seems to be able to stand on his own, but he is obviously still in pain. We'll see if we can get you... Well, actually, I'm going to pull out the bottle of whiskey I've been holding on to. And I'm going to offer it to him. Fuck, okay, man, yeah. Okay, just... And immediately downs half of the bottle. As expected. I'll just say, keep it. You need it more than I do. I understand why people in your professions take up smoking so often now. Or drinking. Yeah, that too. 
<gasps> we should probably get back to the guild. And I'm gonna Yay. turn towards where Sylvia is again. We need to get her somewhere safe where she can recover. <sighs> and where you can heal. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna quickly go uh, back over and pick up Sylvia again gently. And then I want to guide them to the guild, but try to take kind of the edge of town to avoid any conflicts that are within the town and then go into that building again. As you make your way to the guild, you simply hear honking and explosions. Oh, the honking has occurred. Great. And you make it. No problems, no no being accosted by anything. And you get to the guild. Go ahead and make the roll to open the door. Yep. Here we go. I'd say 27. This fucking lock, it just keeps getting you. It Bang my head against it a few times, getting... and then I'm gonna try again. <laughs> Fuck! 29! <laughs> <laughs> this this lock was made to take on even the best lock pickers and as you bang your head against the door a second time the door unlocks and you what see Elsa Fitter just kind of opening the door and just like come on kid I feel like I'm covered in blood <laughs> a little bit <laughs> <laughs> you know that it's a constantly resetting lock. You gotta keep the torque up, kid. You I mean, it's, don't oh, know shit, do you need a... what I've been through in the last oh, three shit. hours, and I'm picking up hey, Sylvia hey, hey. while I'm saying this. I got the uh, I got the water working while you were out. Well, you should probably get yourself cleaned up there, bud. And while I stop next to him, I'm going to reach into the bag of holding and offer him the letter. Shit, what's a... Where'd you find this? I would recommend sitting down before you read it. It's from... Right. Mom. Shit. She bailed before shit hit the fan for us. Right then. Right, okay. You get your stuff cleaned up. Um, Your, uh, your friend, she, she can, uh, she can use a mild bed, or, uh, Yours is probably uncomfortable from all that time, but uh, mm -hmm. just uh, just get yourself cleaned up, bud. Uh, I'll lock this door up for you. I'm give him a nod, and I'm taking her straight to that bed. I'm not taking his advice of cleaning up. I am just sitting there. <laughs> all right. As you sit next to this bed watching, waiting for Sylvia to show any signs of getting better. I will also say I'm going to attune to the rifle while I'm doing this because I can't be attuned to the ring anymore. You find that the night keeps dragging on and with the end of this arduous night comes the end of this session. Fuck. That was a... <laughs> oh. I got my gold on, but fuck me. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, for anyone who catches this stream, uh, if you need to be caught up, if you've missed the past ones, please check out the YouTube channel of our previous... Uh, sessions uh, it's linked in the description I hope everyone involved enjoyed tonight's session and um, hmm. if you wish for more Thursday same time bi-weekly bi -weekly basis because these weeks there's me but next week there's the scale of fate campaign 
parties A and B. Or I get to torment the party. <laughs> oh, yeah. And also, Tuesdays of the weeks where I'm running, the Blackwater Campaign. A wonderful little uh, jaunt through a fantasy pirate world. I hope you all have good nights. Bye.